Today we're going to do chapter 23, inference for the mean of a population, t distributions. If our data comes from a simple random sample and the sample size is sufficiently large enough and is greater than or equal to 40, the central limit theorem tells us that our sample and distribution of the sample means is approximately normal with a mean mu, that's our population mean, And our standard deviation, sigma over the square root of n. And sigma is the standard deviation of the population. If sigma is unknown, we can use our standard error, and that would be s over the square root of n, and that's our sample standard deviation. T distribution. Once sigma is replaced with s, the statistic has more variation and no longer has exactly a normal distribution, so we can't use z. So we have to use the t distribution. With the t distribution, the properties are its unimodal symmetric bell shape has a fatter tail than the normal distribution, but not quite a tail. t represents the number of standard deviations that our sample mean is from the population mean. The degrees of freedom is n minus 1, and as the degrees of freedom increase, the t distribution becomes more like the normal model since s gets closer to sigma. To find a confidence interval for our t distribution, it's the statistic plus or minus the margin of error, the statistic plus or minus the critical value times the standard error, or the formula that you're going to use and you should write down every time you use it is x bar plus or minus t star n minus 1 times our sample standard deviation over the square root of n. So we're going to estimate t star for a 90% confidence interval with degrees of freedom 10. So t star 10, just using your table, would be 1.812. However, if you notice on your table, if I want um, a 98% confidence interval with degrees of freedom of 120, t star 120 is not on your table. You would have to use 2.364, which is about from 100. So that would be about 2.364. Um, However, using your calculator, you can get the exact T star. So T star with 120 degrees of freedom would be inverse T, um, 1E99 to 120. And that's about... 2.358 from your calculator. But you could say you're going to estimate it using the table with 120 degrees or 100 degrees of freedom because that's closest to 120. Just make sure you state that in the problem that you're doing if you're using your table. So if n is less than 15, the data must be close to a normal distribution. If there are outliers with a small sample size, the result will not be reliable. If n is between 15 and 40, the data must be uni unimodal and reasonably symmetric. And if n is greater than 40, you can use a t-procedure, even if the data is skewed, but be aware of any outliers. So we're going to go through an example here. So we have a company has set a goal of developing a battery that lasts five hours in continuous use. A first test of 12 of these batteries is measured, and the following lifespans in minutes are given to us here. 321, 295, 332, 351, 336, 311, 253, 270, 326, 311, 288, and 281. We want to find a 90% confidence interval for the mean lifespan of this battery. So with step one, we need to define our parameter. Mu equals the true mean lifespan of this type of battery. Step two, you need to make a picture. So here is the picture of the histogram, here's the picture of the box plot, and here's the normal probability plot. You could do all three, but you don't necessarily have to. A lot of times we go directly to the normal probability plot so that we can justify using a T procedure. 
Okay, so how you find each one of these using your calculator, and then you can just draw a sketch of it. To find a histogram, you first need to go to stat and put your data in list one. Make sure you turn plot one on, and while you're at it, make sure there is no equations in y equals. Choose the third picture, which is a histogram. Your x list is in list one. Our frequency is one because we're counting each one um, once. And then you're going to press a zoom stat, which is zoom nine, and it will give you your histogram. If you want to get a box plot, again, you put your data in list one. You turn your plot one on, and you choose the box plot which is this one right here, you press zoom nine and it will give you a box plot. Now the normal probability plot is the one that we like to use most because you can state that you can use a T distribution because you, it's plausible that the data comes from a normal model. So here you put your data in list one again, turn plot one on. This last one is a normal prob probability plot. Our data listed is in list one and our data axis is gonna be X. You press zoom nine again, and this is fairly straight, so it is plausible that our sample data comes from a normal model. So step three, is the use of a T-procedure justified? Um, so although our sample size is small, Um, I'm going to use our normal probability plot. The normal probability plot is fairly straight. So it is plausible our data come from a normal distribution. We'll assume that the sample is a random sample of batteries. And 12 batteries is less than 10% of all batteries. So we're going to calculate the interval. And you need to show this, but you can use your calculator. So the first thing you want to do is you want to state what type it is. And it's a one sample t interval for a mean. So our confidence interval would be x bar plus or minus t star times s over the square root of n. So now you would go ahead and plug your information in. Um, you would need to actually find this, and you can go ahead and do that on your calculator. And it will give the information for you to plug in, um, with the exception of t star, which you would need to find. So you can go ahead and use the test on your calculator and I can show you again if you didn't see it in your textbook how to do that but it will give you x bar which is 3 point or 306.25 plus or minus um, t star with 11 degrees of freedom is 1.796 times my standard deviation of the sample is 29.31. I have 12 in my sample, so it's over the square root of 12. And this gives you 306.25 plus or minus 15.196. So my interval is 291.05 to 321.45. In your calculator, it's under test and it's T interval. When you go ahead and give this, it will give you your T interval at the top of 291.05 to 321.45. It will also give you X bar, 
which is 306.25. It will give you S, which is your sample standard deviation, which is 29.31. And we know that N equals 12, and your degrees of freedom you would have to state is 11. And it gives you this, which then you would plug into the formula to get full credit. Then you need to interpret your interval, and you would say, I am 90% confident that the true mean lifespan of this type of battery is between 291.05 and 321.45 minutes. And you're done. Now, in B, if we wish to conduct another trial, how many batteries must we test to be 95% sure of estimating the mean lifespan to within 15 minutes? So that means our margin of error would be 15. Um, we would use, and initially we need to use Z star since we don't know the degrees of freedom. To get the degrees of freedom, we need to um, first find N using Z star and then find N again. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do this example here. And so what we would do, instead of using T star, we would use Z star here. So our N, our margin of error here, would be 15 minutes. So we would have 15 minutes equals Z star for a 95% confidence interval is 1.960. Okay, and we're using Z star because we don't know our degrees of freedom yet. And then our standard deviation was 29.31. And we're trying to find out what N is. Okay, so we need to solve for n. So you would go ahead and solve for n, and we would have n equals 1.960 times 29.31 over 15, all squared. And we would get n is about... 14.667. So we need to round up to 15. Okay, since we're rounding up to 15, that means our degrees of freedom is 14. If here, if your n was greater than or equal to 40, you wouldn't have to plug it back into the T star formula. Your sample size is large enough. However, our n is less than 40, so we need to plug it back into the um, standard, the margin of error formula for T star. So I'd have 15 again equals. Um, T star with a degrees of freedom of 14, 29.31 all over the square root of N. With a degrees of freedom of 14, T star um, would be 2.145. So we would go ahead and solve for N, and N would be 2.145 times 29.31 all over 15 all squared. And I would get n is about 17.567. But we always need to round up. So for this, our sample size would have to be n equals 18. Remember, if originally using z star, you get something greater than or equal to 40, you don't have to go through and plug in the degrees of freedom. Your sample size is large enough, and you can use that number.